so I started in a, you know, I rented a 20 square meter room which was on the second or third floor of a, of a building which entailed me taking everyone's bikes up several flights of store, uh, stairs to, uh, to, to, to mend them. Not the most convenient place to have a bike workshop, I have to say, but uh, I, I mean, it started, it, it started off slowly and then I, got a, I, I had a bit of luck with, uh, you know, with, a, with a small article in, in, a, in a newspaper and then after that it was just, you know, it got busier and busier all the time. And I quickly moved into a, you know, a, you know, a space double the size and then, uh, you know, I got uh, Emil as, you know, Emil came in as my partner a year later after the first year and uh, then we I think in our second year we moved into a, a, a place that was double the size of that again so and you know had a workshop and a sort of small shop area attached to it. From the start I mean obviously being being a sm starting off as being a small workshop we uh, you know I always I, w I was never going to be picky about what what bikes uh, we took in. I was never going to turn anyone away and I don't, you know, uh, even nowadays we, we're never turning someone away because it's the wrong type of bike. Uh, if, it, if it really is beyond repair or, or, or saving then we, 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 we do do that but we never used to do it. We used to always just try and make everything work. One of the things I think that made us like a lot, you know, different from or career different from from others is that we, you know, we we, we offered a service to uh, to customise bikes, so we would take them all to pieces and uh, you know, discuss with the with the customer what what colour and what they would like to do with it, and you know if they you know if if we were literally going to polish things up and make it look as new as possible with a new colour or build new wheels, put new other bits and pieces on it and essentially get a new bike. So, yeah, I mean, it's like any other custom process. It was a sort of, you know, a, a discussion between between us and the, and the client, basically, as to what they, what they wanted their bike to be and look like. It's quite hard work sometimes with a lot of uh, old bikes, but we did, we would also do it with new, you know, building up new bikes from, from frames and custom components. It's quite a striking thing when you see the, the, the Korea when they come here in the spring. And, uh, you know, they're quite fascinating birds in the way that they're, you know, they're very, uh, they're a very beautiful looking bird, but they're, uh, and they're, and they're so sort of, you know, I, I, I think that most people either love them or hate them. They love them because they look like amazing and they, the way they fly and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the enormous distance they travel to get, you know, to, they migrate each year. But, uh, you know, or, the, or they hate them because they're basically always attacking them, you know, on golf courses and things like that. But, you know, having, having decided that that was going to be the name for the, for the bike shop, uh, Korea, uh, you know, knowing what you do about them, uh, you know, they, they have one of the longest migratory routes of any bird, so they obviously have a, a great endurance, but they, uh, they're also extremely good uh, you know, at, at flying, they're very good. You know, like they have good handling almost. <laughs> for me, cycling is—it's been sort of part of my life. For uh, you know, I, I think it's probably part of everyone's life from a very early age. What's been happening nowadays is I think there's a there's a huge generation of, of, of cyclists that are probably you know in their you know my age that have uh, that have not cycled since they were teenagers or going to school and for most people I think that getting on a bike is their first sort of taste of 
freedom. It's the first time you can sort of ride away from the house and be sort of out of sight and really go wherever you like with, you know, with relative ease. Um, so I think that cycling gives, uh, you know, nostalgically, people were maybe of my generation were getting on a bike because it was sort of the thing that people were doing. And they were suddenly remembering actually that this was a, you know, it was a very liberating thing to do and, uh, and uh, you know, it gave them the sort of, you know, much, you know, a, a, bit, a bit of freedom that they maybe you don't really experience sitting in a metal box that is a car. Um, you know, you get the, the environment, um, you know, there's fitness involved. It's just generally, you know, the whole act of doing it is, a, it is generally speaking, a, you know, it, it's a positive, you know, thing. Iceland is not a particularly uh, welcoming environment. You know, it's dark in the winter, it's, you know, it's not particularly warm all year round. It can be very cold during the winter, it can be snow, it can be ice, there's rain, you know, there's, you know, there are many reasons not to go outside and do anything. <laughs> you know, for a few years I, you know, I religiously cycled outside you know, throughout the winter in all types of condition. I maybe don't do it quite so much now, but it's possibly to do more to do with uh, having small children and a, and a family so much as, as anything else, but, um, but I still do, and there's nothing really to stop you at any point cycling outside. I maybe wouldn't recommend going out when it's blowing a hurricane, but the snow and the ice and just being cold, it's not, it's not necessarily a, something that should stop you from going outside. It's great to come here to work every day because everyone is so, you know, it's just, it is just like coming, it's, my, it's, my, it's our second home basically and I'm sure that Emil would say the same thing. All these people around me are sort of like, you know, they're like our, the, the career extended family basically.